everybody and welcome to another brand new edition of T Watches a Scary Movie. My name is T and of course we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new edition of the show. Remember, every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I'll have an episode going up where I'm going to be talking about movie news, I'll have an opinion piece for you, or sometimes a good interview for you to check out as well too. But throughout the week, I'm going to be dropping reviews for you guys, a minimum of two, but usually it's going to be between two and five, just depends on how busy the week is. So the best way to stay on top of all the content that I'm dropping for you guys is to get subscribed to my link tree. And you can do that by going to linktr.ee slash T scary movie. If you get subscribed to my link tree, that'll give you access to the YouTube page for the video versions of the show, to your favorite podcasting platforms, the audio only versions of the show, to my letterbox page for my written reviews, and my movie rankings throughout the year, to my TikTok page for my short horror content, including movie news and movie premieres, to my Twitch page, where you can catch all of my horror gaming. And finally, to my Fangoria shop page, where you can enjoy a 20% off discount anything in the Fangoria shop, including a yearly subscription to the physical magazine. You do not want to miss out on that, y'all. Hit that subscribe button, especially if you're watching on YouTube, as the more subscribers I get, the more content I can drop for all of you. So what are we talking about here tonight? Folks, I got a chance to go and check out an early screening of the third and currently final film in Ty West's trilogy, Maxine, just a couple of nights ago. And I am here to share all the great details of that film with you, spoiler free, of course. We got that 10 year rule going on. And then hopefully you can go get a chance, to check that out here for yourself and see what you think of this fitting conclusion to this wonderful trilogy. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and jump right on into things here. If you haven't seen the trailer for Maxine yet, Maxine tells the story of Maxine Meeks in the mid 80s who has finally made her way to Los Angeles and is looking for a way to get her name in the stars. She wants to be on the big screen after everything that went down back in 1979 and she's ready to do whatever it takes to get the life that she deserves. Now, if you've seen the previous two films in this trilogy, X and Pearl, you know that we've been following this path of blood and mayhem and sex and violence for a few decades at this point. And we're now getting to the conclusion of Maxine's story. And we've seen a couple plot lines set up over the course of these films. So it was very interesting to see the way that this was all going to find, it, find its conclusion. You know, the first film in this trilogy, X, focused on Maxine and her friends going to this secluded Texas home to where they were gonna go shoot this porno. And the whole idea was that at the time they were shooting this, porn was still a very revolutionary thing, the way that it was being done. So it was so taboo to make the kind of film that they were looking to go and make. And unfortunately, the house that they ended up at where they were trying to shoot this film was owned by this psychopath and her husband, who uh, unfortunately uh, were teaching a lesson about squandering youth and squandering the beauty that we all have in life and teaching a very violent and painful lesson to Maxine and all of her friends and all the madness that went down. Now, Pearl, who was one of the perpetrators of these crimes at this Texas house, was the focus of our second film as we shot back um, a, a few decades to focus on Pearl's young life and how she got to the situation that she ended up in an ex to where she's this murderous, psychotic woman who's just taking anybody out that stumbles across her farm. And the thing about it was that there's supposed to be this idea that Pearl and Maxine are kind of the same person. They, they came from like the same similar set of circumstances, same opportunities placed in front of them. And in one case, Pearl's life took just this sad, terrible, tragic turn due to a number of betrayals of people in her life and her own mental instability. 
and with Maxine, Maxine had to actually escape. She had to claw and fight her way out of her situation to actually try to improve her life to where it needed to be. And this, not necessarily wonderlust, but this idea that she's always wanting more and more and more. You know, she will not accept the life that she does not deserve. And she's going to fight to get these things that she wants. And so I was intrigued already just because I do think X is one of the best horror films that we've ever gotten honestly and especially one of the best horror films of the new millennium honestly I, I really truly do and Pearl I really really did enjoy Pearl but Pearl was a very different movie from X X is very much an exploitive slasher all right um you know I think there's obvious you can look at that and see the obvious inspirations from films like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in there but then Pearl very much changes that up because Pearl's not really a slasher it's still it's still a horror movie for sure but it's not the same kind of movie that X is and Maxine is very much a different film as well too and I'm hitting that before really touching upon a lot of the plot or anything because that's important to know is that I think that if you walk into Maxine in the same mindset that you might have tried to do for Pearl that you're gonna leave very, very disappointed. And I say that because I know I walked into Pearl looking for the same kind of movie that X was, and it wasn't. And that left me very, very conflicted because I enjoyed what I saw, but it was hard for me to not feel like I was missing the slasher film that X was, because you know me, I love slashers, absolutely love them. I think they are the height of horror films over the last hundred years, honestly. I really, truly do. And so I was a hard pill to swallow knowing, knowing that Pearl wasn't really doing that. And I unfortunately made the same mistake uh, with Maxine, to where I had hoped that, especially given the time period, that we'd get back to a slasher movie. And the fact that it was going to be done in mid 80s Los Angeles, neon lights, great music, loving, loving the fashion sense. Uh, Ty West really brings Los Angeles alive, you know, and that's what everybody has been saying about this film. It's very much a fun companion piece to something like a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that really glamorizes and shows off like the seedy parts of Los Angeles, but makes them so uh, like so uh, addicting to like to be in, to like surround yourself in, to immerse yourself in, honestly. Ty West, the cin cinematography in this film is phenomenal, honestly, and LA looks so great. And those of y'all who are big, big um, behind the scenes movie buffs or in big Universal fans, there's so much fun to be had in this movie. As y'all know, like there's some big set pieces that take place on the actual Universal back lot. We get to see um, the Bates Motel. We get to see, you know, uh, Norm Norman Bates' house as well too from Psycho. And very much while it's very much a set the idea of that piece that iconic piece of history and the fact that we know we're on the universal back lot so we're running through hill valley and all these other places just something about that is again like i said it's a companion piece to once upon a time in hollywood but it really really truly is y'all like you're you're really feeling like you're getting an update of the city from what we saw in that film to what we're seeing now in maxine so that's one of the best things that ty west is able to do with this film is that he does bring the city of Los Angeles alive. You know, what doesn't work out so well in this film is the motivation of it and I think the conclusion of Maxine's motivations. Because the idea that was set up in X was that she wants to be this star. She wants this focus. She wants her name to be remembered by so many people. And this terrible, terrible thing happens and she doesn't get that notoriety from it. Um, she can't because she might be held responsible for the events of X and all her friends being killed like that. And so she's given this opportunity in Maxine to be the star of this horror sequel that's coming out. 
and this could do wonders for her it really could she's working with this famed director she's taking over for this actress who you know got her big break doing the first film there's a lot of eyes on this movie and this could be maxine's big big break but the problem is is that they don't really pursue it too much you know for something that's supposed to be so instrumental and so big to maxine itself it's almost like it gets lost in the background of this film because if you've been seeing the marketing for this and seeing some of the stuff surrounding this movie for sure there's a lot of horror equals porn and people protesting it and it's supposed to mirror obviously real life and the way it works out when folks make horror uh, horror films and the outrage people had back in the 80s about movies like these coming out and pornography and things like that but that really feels like it gets lost so much in the background and that ties into uh that ties into the culprit behind all of this which is unfortunately another one of the pitfalls of this film as well too in which that you kind of already know who the bad guy is in this movie. I'm not gonna say it because we got our 10 year rule, I'm trying to respect that very much, but you know who the bad guy of this film is gonna be if you watched X. You, you should very well know who the bad guy of this film should be. It's not really gonna catch you by surprise. It's not a whodunit either, but I think the issue is is that the film almost tries to set it up like it's a bit of a mystery of us trying to figure out, oh, who's this person that's hired this private detective to track Maxine down, who will reveal all of her secrets if she doesn't show up and do this one thing. And they, they add that little bit of mystery, but the mystery is not the purpose of the story itself. And I honestly found myself being a little not agitated is the right word but a little more distracted by all the night stalker stuff that was happening in the film as well too because i think that for anybody that's walking in that knows the structure of a lot of horror films probably already knows that this is not going to be the night stalker who's behind these things and so it just ends up being chatter in the background honestly and it doesn't do a well enough job to distract you from the events of the film itself so it just ends up coming off as and I don't want to use the word annoying. Annoying is not the right word, but it's it's just an agitation. It's an agitation with that being there, honestly, which feeds into my bigger agitation with the film, the supporting cast. For such a strong supporting cast, you have Kevin Bacon, you have Michelle Mo, uh, Mo, Monaghan, you have Bobby Cannavale, you have um, uh, 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 Halsey, uh, you have uh, Giancarlo Esposito, you have all these fantastic actors in this film, and most of them feel like they don't add anything to this movie at all. I think that Kevin Bacon gets the best showing out of anybody in this film, anybody. Um, only second, obviously, to Maxine herself, but the supporting cast just wasn't given anything in this film to do. And it's a problem just because, again, if you look at the other films in this series, X was very much this ensemble piece. Like, yes, it was focused on Maxine for sure, but the other characters I do feel got the proper fleshing out that they needed. They all had their own plots. They had their own storylines. In Pearl, our focus was Pearl. That's it. And while there was that supporting cast, we understood that they were all there really to push Pearl towards her ultimate destiny, honestly. So it wasn't as bad in that film. But the problem here, Maxine, is that Maxine herself isn't written to be as interesting as she previously was. And therefore, this supporting cast that shows up it's kind of a mix between they're taking time from more exposition and more development for Maxine herself by not developing these other characters anymore at all. Like I think that when you leave this film, the problem again is that the only two cast members you're likely going to re be remembering here is Maxine and Kevin Bacon's private detective. That is realistically it. The other characters just don't seemingly play this big role. And that does include Giancarlo Esposito, who does actually play like this pivotal role to the storyline, but as again, feels like he's just so lost in the shuffle. 
And I will say to his credit, Kevin Bacon does a wonderful job in his role. It's nice to see him playing, again, like a character that's so, so seedy and kind of harkens back to a lot of the characters that he was playing in like the early 90s, these evil, despicable characters who would do these terrible, terrible things, but it's Kevin Bacon, so there's always that little bit of charm to them. And I loved his private detective in this film for sure. I think that's gonna be a favorite amongst a lot of people. But again, outside of Kevin Bacon, the cast doesn't really exist. And that's one of the biggest issues that Maxine has. Now, beyond that, I do actually think that there's a really, really good movie here. I just think that expectations have to be tempered, that it is very different from what we get in X. It is very different than what we get in Pearl. It doesn't match the highs of X. And unfortunately, it does match the lows of Pearl. And I enjoy it. And I know I'm saying a lot of negativity about it. I do find it is very fitting. And I did thought it was very interesting as well, the fact that out of the two previous films that we got, Maxine is not really featured in an exploitive state in this film. Um, and Mia Goff herself is not really like shown in an exploitive state in this film either. And I did find that very interesting because that was a big, big point of the prior two films is that Mia Goth and her character of Maxine and Pearl is very much exploited throughout those films. And I found that very interesting that in this case here in Maxine, that that character is not exploited the same way that she kind of was in those two films where it was really for sex in X and in Pearl. And in Maxine, Maxine is very much in control of that aspect of her life, her body, her mind and everything. So it's not even a plot point anymore. And I thought that was great development, honestly. I think that's one of the best things here is the fact that, you know, how prevalent the sex was in the previous two films is that it's kind of lot like thrown by the wayside here in this one. And I think that's very, very important, again, to this trilogy and the development of the character and what Mia Goth has done with the role itself. Either way, though, I do think it is a fitting conclusion here, even if it does still leave a big question mark to whether or not the point was actually accomplished for what Maxine was trying to do, because it does leave a very, very big question mark here for that towards the end. So I don't know. Uh, I want you all to check it out and let me know in the comment section, because remember again, month of July, Every video I put out, you have a chance to win yourself a Tall Man Funko Pop just by answering the question I ask in the episode down in the comment section here on YouTube. So my question for you, y'all, is so far, if you have seen Maxine, what is your favorite of the three films that we've got? And if you haven't seen Maxine, which do you prefer, X or Pearl? Let me know in the comment section. That's all you got to do to get an entry for a chance to win a Tall Man Funko Pop. Hit that subscribe button, folks. We got a lot of good stuff coming for you. Next week is Long Legs. We are getting it finally here. And we're going to finish off the After Dark Horror Festival, uh, Horror Fest Year 3. So stay tuned for that, y'all. But that's it tonight. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Boy here is a big fan of Fangoria. So if you want to check out the world's best horror magazine that's out there, get a chance to get yourself your own subscription, which I just got my first one back in 2022, and I don't regret it for a second. But if you want your own Fangoria subscription or you like the Fangoria merchandise, then head over to the Fangoria shop and use my link if you want to save yourself some money, folks. That's an easy one to remember. Just go to shop.fangoria.com slash A-X-D-E-W. Again, that's shop.fangoria.com slash A-X-D-E-W. Or use my specific code, A-X-D-E-W, at checkout. You can save 20% off your entire order, and that implies two uh, subscription and a one-time orders as well you don't want to miss out folks because with the magnitude of horror movies we've had released in the last few years and with what we have on the horizon Fangoria is going to be your number one source for all that great juicy bloody information in the world of horror so again head to shop.fangoria.com
Hey there, folks! Thanks for tuning in to T-Watch This Scary Movie. I appreciate you checking out another review or movie news, whether we're talking movies, TV shows, books, or games, whatever. It's all scary. Remember, you can check out new episodes every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on the YouTube page video. That's youtube.com slash C slash Theron Scary Movie. Again, youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. And you can check out the audio version on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Just search T Watch the Scary Movie or Twaza. Don't forget, my name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared.